the unbelievable reality of Joe Flacco, plus the Pistons near miss. While you were sleeping, the Browns are winning the Super Bowl, aren't they? At this point, I'd believe anything you told me about Joe Flacco. Possible truths. Is he, after sitting at home with his kids for the first three months of the season, December's best quarterback at nearly 39 years old? Sure. Is this some malfunction of the human simulation, in which a coding error led us to an alternate reality? Extremely possible. And does Flacco have a chance to win the Super Bowl this year? Maybe even Super Bowl MVP? Why not? Nothing's real, and everything is also real at the same time. Consider Flacco in the Browns' 37-20 beatdown of the Jets, his most recent former team, last night. Despite missing top receiver Amari Cooper, the QB who was signed 38 days prior went 16 of 22 for 296 yards and three touchdowns in the first half. He finished with 309 yards, giving him four 300-yard games this year. That's good for sixth most in the NFL this season, tied with guys like Doc Prescott and Josh Allen. Flacco has played five games. He even has a shot at his first 2,000-yard season since 2018. With the win, the 11-5 Browns clinched their second playoff berth since 2002. Though unlikely, they could still win the AFC North and capture the AFC number one seed with some help from Flacco's most noteworthy former team, the Ravens. What a simulation this is. Must see basketball. It's so bad, it's good. A strange thing has happened as the Detroit Pistons have become arguably the worst team in NBA history, each of their games is a must watch. Is tonight the night they break the historic losing streak? Tune in to find out. I'm positive NBA Commissioner Adam Silver didn't envision having this as a ratings play while he prepares to negotiate a new TV deal, but a win is a win. Or a loss is a win. At least here. Last night, we watched with rapt attention as the Pistons surged to a 66-47 halftime lead against Gasp the Celtics, the NBA's best team, in Boston. What a story that would be, snapping the historic losing streak against a juggernaut. Alas. The lead evaporated in a disastrous third quarter and, despite a heroic, game-tying tip-in by Bogdan Bogdanovic with 4.1 seconds left, the Pistons could not survive overtime. Celtics 128, Pistons 122. The streak now sits at 28 games, tying the process Sixers record for longest losing streak in NBA history. Detroit, who last won before Halloween, can set, or avoid, that record tomorrow evening against the 12-18 Raptors. I'm left wondering a question James Edwards III and Sam Vesany try to answer, where do the Pistons even go from here? News to know. Shannon charged with rape. Illinois suspended standout guard Terrence Shannon Jr. from all team activities yesterday after authorities in Kansas issued a warrant for his arrest on a rape charge. The incident allegedly occurred when Shannon visited Lawrence, Kansas, in September for a football game between the Illini and Jayhawks. If found guilty, Shannon could face over 50 years in prison. Another stop on the Vikings QB carousel. Fifth round rookie Jaron Hall will start at quarterback for Minnesota this weekend, the team announced, replacing Nick Mullins, who started the last two games. Hall was Kirk Cousins' original replacement, but a concussion in his first start gave way to Josh Dobbs' special run, which fizzled before Mullins stepped in. The 7-8 Vikings remain in playoff contention. Franco no-shows. Ray's shortstop Wander Franco did not appear for a meeting with the Dominican prosecutor investigating his alleged relationship with a minor, the AP reported. Franco is facing multiple complaints of having inappropriate relationships. More news. Alabama has tightened its film protocol ahead of its matchup with Michigan, which is still embroiled in a sign-stealing scandal. The Crimson Tide also scored an early win over the Wolverines, talented USC cornerback Domani Jackson chose Alabama over Michigan. 
Bill's defensive end Von Miller called the charge of assaulting his pregnant girlfriend last month 100% false and overblown in his first public comments since his arrest.